If I had to pick just one of the things that I learned about business so far, is that there is a difference between spending and investing. Because investments imply that there is an expectation for a return, whereas spending creates expenses, which is a necessary evil for so many companies. But at the end of the day, what we are trying to achieve is to minimize expenditure and maximize output. This is the reason why companies are trying to build or acquire assets. Assets are resources which are expected to bring a future economic benefit for their owners. In other words, assets are investments. And of course, there are good investments and bad investments. But the punchline is that if you can find a way to make your resources work for you, you can generate a positive feedback loop that appreciates in value with every cycle. If you have to decide between renting a bigger space, hiring a new employee, or buying a new machinery, which one should you choose? Well, the short answer is that you should pick the one that brings the highest return. For the long answer, and probably the most accurate one, I will need a full episode. So if you can spare 10 minutes, let's jump into answering the most crucial question of all where, how, and when to invest or spend. Hi, and welcome to the Business and Technology Podcast with Nicola Stratis, the show that discusses technology in business and business in technology. Every day is an opportunity. Every day is a fight. And every day requires you to take a decision. Our future is shaped by the cumulative impact of our past decisions. Rushing into decisions can be catastrophic. Underestimating the importance of today jeopardizes the significance of tomorrow. At the same time, delaying the decision-making process is like avoiding to cook because you are not sure if you are going to be hungry or not. What's important to identify in every situation is whether the actions we are about to take are easily reversible or not. If they are not, then we shall treat the process of taking a decision with respect. For, for a small, medium-sized business, an investment, a purchase, a menu change is not something that can be altered every day. All these are significant decisions, and if you are a business owner, you must deal with these kind of dilemmas every single day. And unless you have a mechanism to get through this in a structured way, you will end up in a chaos governed by your intuition and gut feeling. I'm not underestimating the importance of experience and business acumen when it comes to taking big decisions. What I'm saying, however, is that there is one thing that needs to be taken into account, and that's strategy and data-driven decision-making process. Let's break it down, though. Why strategy is important? Well, it is because it gives you a direction and purpose. Working on your strategy implies that you have an end goal, something to achieve and something to wait for. But maybe that's all theory for you, and I get it. In a business world, where you have to fight 18 hours a day for your business to survive, who has time to dedicate in strategies? Well, let me present a counter, a counter argument though, because apart from a direction and a general purpose, strategy has a superpower that's never mentioned in any theoretical books. By nature, it takes you away from the heat of the moment. Because strategies develop beforehand, at the beginning of the year or when you start a new venture, at a time when you are calm and away from the emotions of your daily routine. And yes, it can be flexible, but with the necessary discipline, strategy becomes an emotionless advisor that is the calmest version of yourself. If you cannot fulfill your orders, if you have to say to some prospects no because you don't have the time, think of your strategic goals. How do I increase my capacity? Is it by employing more people? Is it by automating my operations? 
the answers to these questions should be documented within your strategy. Because at the end of the day, strategy answers the one question that we are asking ourselves every day. Where do I want to get? What do I want to become? So that's strategy. The other part of the equation is data-driven decision-making. I've spoken with people before and they would tell me that I know how many orders I'm receiving, how much I'm making. That's the only data that's relevant to me. Well, it's not. Because if you know how much you make, you don't know how much you don't make. How many opportunities you are leaving open on the table because of your ignorance. Data is power. You can never have too much of either of those things. But just like power, the acquisition of data does not create a positive outcome on its own. To do that, you will have to analyze it, understand it, and use it in a meaningful way. And that way, it is highlighted by your strategy. This is an open invitation to all business owners, big or small. If you have to decide where to invest next, prioritize investments that align with your strategy and investments that allow you to gather more data and understand better your operations, clients, and services. Thank you very much for your time here. I hope you enjoyed the content. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more discussions around business and technology. See you soon.